Hi, my name is Lynn Looney. I'm a professional artist and I have a two-part tutorial on watercolor with lots of information to share with you. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do in this one is talk about how to stretch watercolor paper on stretcher bars. If you've never done that, that'll be a new experience. How to select your reference, make thumbnails from that, take your drawing and transfer it to your paper, painting step by step, as well as how to finish out your piece without having to use a matte or glass. All right, so there's lots of information to cover. Here are stretcher bars. This was actually a canvas. I took the canvas off. I pulled the staples out and removed it. Uh, and this is an eight by 10. You can see the staple marks. It is the bevel. Um, you're gonna want a lightweight stapler. Uh, the staples I'm using on this particular one are five by 16 inches deep. So it's not a big staple. It's not a deep staple. Uh, you need a cutter and uh, something for a straight edge, uh, as well as uh, when I'm working with watercolor paper, I like to use a watercolor pencil and not a lead pencil. This one is gray, neutral, that'll work fine. My watercolor paper has been soaking for about 10, 15 minutes. It is cut about two inches larger than my stretcher. Okay, the bevel side down onto the paper. Now I'm gonna take my straight edge and I'm gonna mark to the corners, I'm gonna cut this paper, a larger format, a large, something larger than eight by 10, it's easier to fold your, your corners. But for this small, and you'll see it's gonna get crowded, I'm gonna slice the paper up to where the, cam, um, the stretcher bar is. I'll use this um, cheap little ruler as a cutting board. Uh, I'm cutting from the inside out when you soak your paper, it's vulnerable. It's very easy for it to tear. So work gently, but efficiently, because you wanna do this while the paper is thoroughly saturated with water. Um, when it does dry on the frame, it's gonna be like a drum head. And I'll show you that in a little while. But I'm cutting those corners. Uh, the surface that I'm working on is a tabletop that's draped with an old sheet uh, or it could be a tablecloth, um, something uh, to cushion the paper against the tabletop uh, because it is, it's vulnerable. Now, face down with the stretcher bars and I'm going to put one staple in the middle of each side to stabilize it. You don't have to pull a heavy stretch. Uh, for one thing, when the paper dries, it's gonna shrink. Another, again, it's vulnerable and it can tear. So see, just a little, I'm just making it snug. I'm not really pulling it, I'm just pulling, I'm just, you know, gently pulling it over. Put a staple in all four sides. I've already determined what I'm going to paint. So uh, my format is going to be horizontal and that's going to determine which way I'm going to fold my corners um, because I don't want all that fold to show uh, in case I decide not to put this in a frame. All right, so what I'm going to do is pull the bottom, see how nice and smooth that side will be. And I'm gonna give it a fold, give it a tuck, fold it down and put a staple in to hold it in place, all right? And then the side, I can pull down smoothly. See, that whole side's gonna be nice and smooth. Same thing, gonna give it a fold, give it a tuck, put a staple in it to stabilize it and do that same process for each corner. Uh, making sure that the sides are the ones done last. And then I'm gonna clip the film here. You get the idea. I'm gonna put, this is to the last corner. Tuck, fold, staple. And after that, I'm gonna put a whole line of staples in to stabilize those edges so when it does dry, you don't get a scalloped edge. 
And folks, staples are cheap. So, I mean, a box a thousand, I don't know, it was less than $3. Uh, so you can be generous. Uh, here it is. Now, if you notice, the paper is still glistening. It is still wet. Now, see here are the folds to the top and the bottom. See how nice and neat that is? Uh, what you don't realize is this wood on this particular stretcher bar was kind of hard so the staples are sticking up and I'm going to just take a scrap piece of paper and a hammer and tip those in. Uh, I'm using this because it's an old hammer and it'll leave marks on the paper and I just want to keep the work as nice and neat as possible. Obviously your hands are clean as you're working this whole process. You can see the sheen of the water. The paper is still damp. Don't, don't force dry it. Don't try and use a hair dryer on it. Just let it dry naturally. It'll dry fast enough. Okay. Uh, now for my sketch, I have gone through my pictures and I pulled one of my photographs of um, the Gallardius, the subject that I'm using for this first tutorial. Um, I blew it up to the size that would be close to an 8x10. I'm looking at that main flower, the size of it, but the other two pieces, the, uh, the smaller flower to the lower right corner and the seed head to the left, in the photograph are out a little bit and I want to tuck those in. So what I'm doing is sketching my first flower, taking the paper off, repositioning it, and drawing those other pieces. So here is the finished tracing and you can see how the main flower lines up but the other two don't because I pulled them in closer. Okay, so now this is a nice, tight composition on this small format of an 8 by 10 finished piece. All right, I'm working from my own photograph, so I can take liberties. I can use as much or as little. I can rearrange them. I can flip them. Uh, you can see from this that I have taken that flower and I pulled it in. I've taken that seed pod and I pulled it in just slightly. There's a lot of detail in the background, but I'm not going to concentrate on that. I'm not going to use a lot of that. For the sketch, I simply put in a few lines to indicate the direction. Um, the background is going to be more just for a darkened area to highlight the photographs. Then I'm going to do some thumbnails. Um, this particular thumbnail size is a two and a half by three and a half, which is called an ACEO. I will talk about ACEOs in a future tutorial. Um, as far as uh, materials and supplies, brushes, I used uh, mostly a number 12 round. Uh, because I can get a fine line or a broad stroke. Here are the list of the Grumbacher colors that I used, as well as other things in my palette. But this is a predominant colors that I used in the final piece. Um, working the thumbnails is a great way to solve problems. Solve it small instead of getting on your big piece, realize you're in trouble, not sure which way to go, and then you wind up uh, destroying highlights or uh, putting down colors on top of other colors that don't work. Um, and before you know it, you've lost your piece. Uh, it's much better practice on the small ones. On these, I've got six different ones. The basic composition is the same. The treatment of the flowers is pretty much the same. What I have varied has been the background treatment. And from these, I made a decision on which direction I wanted to go on my final piece. And I chose the darker, more dramatic one. All right. Now for transferring your tracing to your paper. Um, I'm testing just to make sure I've got my graphite paper turned the right way. It only works one way. 
Um, I'm going to slide that under my tracing. And I'm going through this process for the folks who aren't gifted with the ability to draw well. Um, I'm lifting this up to check my mark and make sure I'm not bearing down too hard or putting too much graphite. Folks, I was gifted with the ability to draw, and so I can freehand this, but I'm going through this process to show you other folks um, how you can get a very accurate drawing of the subject matter that you want to do by doing a light tracing. Um, I utilize this in my classes just because we expedite time. It takes a while for folks to uh, sketch in their work, and if we just trace it, uh, we can get down to painting. Um, if you lift that up and your lines are not deep enough, you can always go back with that watercolor pencil and darken in the areas that you want to um, make sure that you don't lose. Now, for the full painting of the watercolor, you'll need to go to part two. Uh, in this one, I'm just beginning to start the process, uh, but at this point, I'm going to take this moment to do a quickie personal commercial, and that's to say this is my first full-length tutorial. I hope to do many more in the future. If you would like to be notified when that happens, please hit the subscribe button and then next to that you'll see a little bell and if you hit the bell you'll actually get notified just as soon as I put up the next video <clears throat> so you won't be able to you won't be missing any of them um, and by all means folks I invite you to make comments uh, suggestions like I said uh, this is the very first of hopefully many um, I plan to improve and um, as I go along, there's going to be 12 of these watercolor ones as a minimum. I'm going to be doing one a month and this coincides the classes that I teach over at the Art Center. Uh, but I have a number of acrylic uh, tutorials that are in process right now. Um, that's actually my main focus is acrylic works and big giant abstracts and how to texture and how to stretch a canvas and I have oh so many different ideas and so many different things that I can cover. Um, I invite you to go along with me on this journey and uh, let's do this together. Like I said, helping me along, giving me some suggestions or some feedback. Uh, just some encouragement. I'm sitting here in a room all by myself with my computer and a recorder. Uh, so having some feedback from you will be really uh, beneficial to me uh, for my future projects. Um, to um, backtrack a little bit, I am a professional artist. I have been painting my entire life. Uh, started in commercial artwork, um, in publishing newspapers and magazines. I went back in my mid-20s and got my degree in painting from the Instituto Allende down in Mexico. Um, that really changed my palette from Central Texas muted earth tones to uh, vibrant colors of uh, the mountains of Mexico. Uh, I worked in uh, the... Uh, billboard industry for years painting big giant billboards when they had to have somebody to paint them. I also worked in the entertainment and um, theater industry in Atlanta and down in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I also worked with high-end clientele doing murals and specialty painting. So I have a varied background to pull from, many different things to change, uh, uh, share with you. Hints, um, tricks, tricks of the trade, um, and one of those is right here on the very finished product. I'm giving a little detail, and I did something that I do not normally advocate, and that's use white on a watercolor. And as you can see in my background area where the leaves and the stems are, instead of painting every single one, I simply took a little bit, just a tiny bit, of white watercolor and with the number two round brush I did a few little wisps to give that direction. 
All right then. So folks, let's do these last two steps. Let's do this watercolor step by step, finish it out. Let's go to part two.